full of Toastmasters. How many of you have ever been cold? <laughs> really cold. I'm talking about shivering cold. I'm talking about your hands turning numb. Your feet, you can't feel them anymore. You're from Iowa, yeah, you know about this. <laughs> You're approaching hypothermia. Our normal body temperature is 98.6. When it starts dropping, the first thing that happens is your brain says, ah, I'm getting cold. Turn off the blood to the feet. Turn off the blood to the hands. Constrict all the blood vessels on the skin to save, keep all the warm blood inside in your core area so you don't freeze to death. Now, why on earth would I talk about hypothermia when we're in the middle of the heat wave? Good question, right? Well, you might be interested to know that most people die of hypothermia in the summertime, not in the winter. Why is that? You're up in Tahoe. The temperature is a beautiful 70 or 80 degrees. The sun is out. You put on your shorts and your cotton t-shirt and your tennis shoes and you go out for a hike. Maybe you make a wrong turn and you don't get back as quickly as you think. Or maybe a little rainstorm comes in. And that 60 degrees is all of a sudden down in the 40s, and the rain comes, and you're wet. And the wind is blowing. What's going to happen? You're going to die. Very simple. You're just going to die. Killer of the unprepared. When I first came to the Bay Area in 1971, one of the worst accidents happened in the Sierras over Memorial Day weekend. These were members of the Sierra Club, and I've been going on trips with the Sierra Club, so it's really hit home for me. They were a group from Loma Prieta, which is southern uh, Bay Area, San Jose in that area, they had gone up to climb Mount Ritter. When they got up there, the weather was a little chancy, and a bunch of them said, ah, we're going to stay in camp today, but five of them said, no, we're going to go for it. And they went for it, and they kept going for it. Now, they were fairly competent people. They had experience. They had good, warm clothes. You'd think they would be fine up there. But the storm hit really bad. And finally, they were near the top and decided to turn back, but by that time, they were already suffering from hypothermia. How do you know? <clears throat> well, three things, the mumbles, the fumbles, and the stumbles. You mumble, you're talking with, can't talk plainly. You start dropping things, and you start stumbling. You almost act like you've had too much to drink. Well, they couldn't get down off the mountain. They made a wrong turn. The ravine went down off a cliff, and they had to stop. They dug in under a rock and tried to get out of the wind. Four died, one survived. Recently, a young uh, man, Air Force uh, a reservist, and his two boys were out camping in Missouri. Weather 60 degrees. They go for a hike. Same thing happens. Rain comes in. It's cold. They're walking down the road, and somebody actually gave them an offer of a ride back to town. They turned it down. The only one that survived was their dog. So what happens with hypothermia? Why does it happen? Well, basically, it's very simple. Your body is not generating as much heat as it's losing. When the wind blows, convection is taking away your body heat, and unless you can replace that heat somehow, you're going to start getting colder and colder. If you see it, sit on something like a rock or stone or ice, the conduction is also going to cool you down. And then there's radiation that goes right off your skin all the time. And not only that, but you have perspiration, whether you realize it or not, is that uh, evaporates, that cools you down quite a bit. And of course, when you breathe, Breathe in cold air, you breathe out warm air, plus moisture. And another thing that often happens is you need energy to keep going. And what? how do you get that? You have to eat. And if you're cold and you're miserable, <coughs> you may forget to eat. You may forget to drink. And if, if you get dehydrated, you're also going to have problems as well. What can you do? Well, one thing you can do is make sure you have the warm clothes. You don't want to go for a hike in Tahoe with a t-shirt, tennis shoes, and shorts. 
nothing else. I have a little space blanket that came out of the space program, and you can wrap up in that, and it'll hold up 90% of the radiation from your body. On my hike in the Grand Canyon, I was totally exhausted, couldn't move another step. Cold, the wind was blowing down about 40 degrees, and no food, no water, and I was feeling pretty miserable. I had to rest. Got inside that, and within about 15 minutes, I was so hot, I had to open it up to let some of the heat out. It was great. Had a nice nap. Get out of the wind. If you have wet clothes, take those wet clothes off and do something uh, with dry clothes. If you need an external heat source, try to get where you have a fire or something that will warm you up. The only time that I actually ever possibly had a chance of suffering from hypothermia was a uh, climb that I did in the mountains with a good friend of mine, Matterhorn Peaks and uh, Sierras. Great climb. We did this crack up a granite face. It was just beautiful. Got to the top. Weather was really nice. Again, it was Memorial Day weekend. Came down the other side of the mountain, down at Kalur, through the snow, which was damp and wet. By the time I got back to camp, I was soaked from my waist down. I was exhausted, and but I was happy. I sat down and was about ready to eat and started eating a little bit, and all of a sudden my climbing buddy, Chris, who happened to be a ski patrol guy, so he was very familiar with hypothermia, said, hey Bob, you're on the verge of hypothermia. And once you get too cold, you're going to have a terrible time warming up. So he had me get out of my wet clothes, get in my sleeping bag. He made me a couple of cups of hot tea. And even with that, it took me a couple hours to get back to normal. <clears throat> so I was very happy that Chris was there looking out for me. So make sure that you're not a victim of hypothermia. Make sure that you're not, that you're always prepared. And don't let hypothermia be your killer.